Hi there, Lindy Goodall here. In this video, I'll show you how to work with motifs in Hatch. I'll be working with a modified version of the applique crazy patched to the heart, which you see there on the left. And both of these designs, along with others in this set, were all digitized in Hatch, and they use motifs that are built into Hatch and new motifs that I've created. So come along with me, and we'll have some fun with motifs. So here we are in Hatch. I've taken the original design and taken the motif runs and set them back to single runs and I've removed all the motif stamps. So this gives us an opportunity to rebuild this design. So let's see what we're going for. Here's our finished design. You can see it's quite busy. And if we just look at the motif runs, the lines, you can see that this is what they look like. So we're going to be reapplying these to the run stitches and then we'll add in the motif stamps. So a motif stamp lets us put in um, motifs individually. We can put in one, we can put in multiples, and we'll look at how that's done. So let's go back to our working file. And I've hidden all this messy stuff at the beginning, which is the part that stitches down all the pieces, and we're just going to start with the decorative stitches. So we'll just go down the, the resequence bar and start applying the stitches. The first one comes out of one of the included libraries, so we'll change it first to motif, and then I'll pick the library. This one is the single motifs, and the design I'm looking for is called Zigzag 21. And I need to keep tearing this off so you guys can see all the stitches. And I'll just pick it from the palette there, and select the next one. And the next one is this one. And this one is from the Crazy Quilt Library, which is a bonus library, is Feather 008. Right there. And we'll continue selecting and working down our line. This one's also from the Crazy Quilt Library. It's a flower. It's this one. Now, see these two flowers? I always build my motifs from left to right. I talked about that in the other video where we actually make a motif. And this is so that I know when I look at them in the library, I know what directions they're running. We don't have the ability to reverse the direction, the in-out points on a motif. They're always going to run in the same direction. So if we look at this one, it's going to go that way. And then the next one, I'm going to pick the other one this one. And see see how this one is coming in this direction? And they're still stitching. It stitches down this way, stitches back up this way, but the designs themselves are going in a different direction. And I just have them butted up closely here to make that little loop. So that's a sneaky little thing that you can do on motifs that are directional. If it looks the same either direction, like this one, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. So let's select the next one. This is also from the Crazy Quilt Library, and it's Feather 44. And then we'll select the next one, and it's also from the same library, Crazy Quilt, and 45. Now I've created these so that they work together. Sometimes when you want designs to work together, you can create them that way, or you might have to do some adjusting. There's another pair over here that I'll have to do some adjusting on. So let's make that a different color, just so we can see that there are actually two motifs there. You can make them all the same color. You can make them different colors. It doesn't matter. This one is from one of the built-in libraries. This one is single motifs, and it's one of the leaves. that one, leaf three, and I might want to make that a little bigger. So let's close the lock there and make it, see what happens if we make it a four. And we need to spread this out a little bit. What happens if we make that eight? And I think I like that better. 
when they get too tiny we're going to have really tiny short stitches so sometimes it's just better to make them bigger especially when we have the space to do that choose the next one this one is one of the black work designs from black work library 2 and it's this one bw10 and I also use that on the opposite side of the line. So we'll go to Blackwork 10, or Blackwork 2, two and choose BW10. And then I just have it set up so it's mirrored across that line. Now some of these are matching up because I've already placed my lines and they do line up. If you're doing this from scratch, you have to experiment a little bit and see what's going to work. And I think I left these at the default sizes. So we'll select the next one. And I know this one we'll have to do some messing around with. This one is from the quilt library and it's this one. And what I want is these little knot things to line up in the V of the previous stitch. And you can see that I can move the line and it would sort of start there, but it gets off. So what I did here was I just played around with the numbers until I got it right. Now you can do, you can move these individually, but there are a lot there to move individually. And if you put the numbers in over here, just messing with the numbers, then it applies to the whole line. So I'm going to turn the lock off. I happen to know I recorded what I wrote down here. so. I know what I had. And we need to adjust our spacing. What happens if we make this a little bit wider, taller? Maybe I want a little bit more prominent here. that looks pretty good. By the time you get this stitch, there's going to be so much going on on this design that most people are not going to notice. You might notice, but at some point you just either have to live with it or do something to adjust the other things to get them all perfectly matched. Pick the next line. This is another nested one, but I used a mirrored one that I created that would real easily nest. So we'll go crazy quilt and tear this off so you can see. And this is F009. Now for this one, I'm going to duplicate this one. Control D and then I'm going to mirror it. And then I'll have to pivot it into place. So I've just clicked on it I'm just going to eyeball it here. See, can you see that little circle there? I know you can see these little squares that are open. When the squares are open, it means it's in pivot mode. If I click on it again, see how the squares are filled in? Now it's in resize mode. So let's uh, give it a color so you can see what's going on there. So I have gray on one side, pink on the other. Kind of a nice effect. So we have one more motif that we have to do, and that is the one that goes over the satin border. So I'm going to select the satin border, control D, and for this one I used one of the built-in motifs from single motifs. There it is. Let's change that to black just so we can see it. And in this case, I left this at the default. It just happened to perfectly line up with my satin border. Now what if it didn't? Well, you could either adjust your satin border width or you could adjust the width here. I just got lucky. Now we've done all the motifs, the motif runs, let's do the motif stamps. What the motif stamp tool allows you to do is drop in a single motif. And it brings up your motif libraries. Let's um, let's do this rose. 
select it, click OK, click once for one side, and you can see how it's waggling around out here. Click for the other side. Then I'm going to press Escape to exit that mode. And then I'll just move it into place. I didn't get it quite aligned right, so I'm going to click it again so I have the rotation boxes and move it into place. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a color. And I don't think I need to resize that one. So I'm going to put a leaf down here in the same manner, but first let me talk about this. When we put on a run, it's just one object. So even though there's a whole bunch of little pieces in there, it's just one object because we applied it to a run object. This is a design, and it might be a whole bunch of different elements. So if I click this rose, it's got a lot of different pieces in it. And the reason it does is because this is a triple stitch design. And there's some places where it has to backtrack, and I don't want triple stitches on backtracks. I only want single runs so that the total is a double run. And the reason I like the, the triple runs for these kind of stitches is I want it to look like handwork. Handwork is done with embroidery floss, usually a couple layers. So this built-in design is only one pass. This one is only one pass. So if I wanted to have this heavier, one thing I could do is just back up a color change and sew it again, or I could go in and edit it and change it so that it is a triple pass on that outside line. Yes, you could use these as fill patterns, but you probably wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't use that as a, a motif fill. I might use one of these other ones as a motif fill. But when they're doubled up like that, it's going to run up your stitch count quite a bit. So think about that. Let's continue adding some motif stamps. I'm going to add a leaf. Press Escape, and I want to mirror this. And I'm going to move that pivot point out to the end of the stem, and then just rotate my leaf around, move it into place. Need to rotate it a little bit more here. Oops. See, when you have the open boxes, it's rotate. When you have the solid boxes, it's move and resize. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And I can make that green or not, doesn't matter. Up here, I put in the daisy from the Blackwork collection. So, motif stamp again. Go to, I think that was Blackwork 1. Yes, there it is. Flora 4. OK. Click. Click. Escape. Ooh, I got that one pretty good. I don't think I need to rotate that one. We're going to put another rose in here. Motif stamp. That one's in the quilt, crazy quilt library. It's this rose, the rose bud. Escape. Let's enlarge that some. If you hold down the shift key, it enlarges from the center. So I kind of like that trick. Those are all the standard ones that I've done, the motif stamps. The little doodads, let's go back and see little doodads. These little doodads are also a motif stamp, but I edited them. So the design is actually just one of these little curly leaf things. And I've put it in, I've mirrored it, and then I've resequenced it to make it so from here all the way and come out over there. And then this one, I used a pair of them. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's pretty easy to do. I encourage you to try this. It's you know a simple thing to do. Do it in another document. Don't do it in your main window. And when you get it right, just copy and paste it in. I've already done all that work for you, and it's in the library, so we're just going to go grab it. So let's go back to our working file. 
click motif stamp. It's in the Crazy Quilt Library. It's this one. And OK. Paste. Or click and click. And escape. And then over on this side, I'm just going to instead try to put two of them in there. I'm just going to draw a line. Left click, right click, left click. Press O for object. Move it into place. Maybe change a color. That looks pretty good. So the design is pretty well done, but I had a monogram in mind. So if you want to add a monogram, go to lettering and monogramming, pick lettering. I just used two letters for this and pick a font. Let's see, I want something kind of girly here. How about upright script? Oh, I like that one. So let's make it bigger. I'm going to break it apart. And then I'll move it together, make it kind of overlap, make it artsy. Group that, enlarge it some. And I think I like it. So there are a few more things that we have to do. One of them is we have to do a little bit of resequencing. And the other one is we have to check our motif stamps. Because if we look at this motif stamp, we'll go to the stitching tab, there aren't any ties on this. So we want it to tie in and we want it to tie out. You often find this on the motif stamps because if we had those tie offs on there, it could end up tying off on each little motif when we put it in a fill or a run or something like that. So when we make our motifs, we don't put any ties on there. So we'll need to go back and check each one of these. And you'll have to just do an ungroup. So we'll right click and ungroup or con control U. Select the first object and then the last object. Is it that one? Yes, it's that one. And put it on there. And you'll need to check each one of those motif stamps. So we're not going to do that. I'll let you figure that out. But we do need to move the satin border up a bit. So we'll take that and then the motif that goes on top of it and we'll move that to the end. And now we're ready to go test sew because we've made modifications to this design. So we do need to test sew, make sure we did everything right. And that's it. So I hope this gives you a good idea of how easy it is to work with motifs. I mean, really, the hard part is picking them because there's so many choices. And you can do so many different things with them. And you can resize them. And you can sprinkle them around and do all kinds of fun stuff. It really gives your designs lots of interest, lots of texture. And it doesn't look like every other design that's out there. Now this design, let's move this. If I zoom out a bit. This just fits in a five by seven inch hoop. If you have a larger hoop, consider adding some more motifs under the satin border. And you can have a lacy looking heart. It'd be really pretty, wouldn't it? So I hope this gives you some great ideas on how to use motifs. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time.